You know it's hard to draw everything, but especially these stupid things, which is silly because you have reference on hand. You get it? On hand because it Hey, Walter here, and this is another installment of How Not To, and today we're talking about hands and what a pain in the patootie they are, but uh, before we start, I just want to say I'm not classically trained. I never went to art school. I am, however, a professional artist. Everything I know has been self-tortured, uh, make that self-taught from videos, books, etc., and I'm sharing the struggles I have because I feel like the more I talk about the struggles, the more I learn the, the right ways to do things, and, and hopefully that will help you too. And if it does, make sure you sub to get more how not to videos, um, or even how to videos for, for comics and art and all that stuff. All right, so how not to draw. Tip number one is make a unique hand gesture for every drawing. So coming up with a unique hand gesture every time is tough. I mean, hands are like these weird fleshy spider things that are capable of like all kinds of like weird positions, yet there's a very tiny window for what looks correct for a hand. Um, and so trying to come up with a unique hand every time is tough, and that is why I have some stock hand gestures that I've become really good at drawing that I can draw quickly and I've practiced a lot. So what hand gestures do I have? Well, I have the standing at rest. The huh? The whatever? The shrug? <laughs> yeah, they are, those are all the same. I mean, it's a pretty useful pose. Of course, you got the punch. which is almost the clench. The yikes. The fireball. And the tap, tap, tap. So you can use these or identify some of the poses that you use a lot and it's gonna help speed up your process a lot. How not to tip number two, skipping the gesture. Um, so when you go to draw a hand, I think it's the same as a pose. Like if you start with too much detail on the pose, like you start drawing like the clothes or the face, the features, all that stuff before you get the gesture of the pose down, um, the pose itself is gonna fall apart, and so you draw the gesture of the pose to get the energy, the mood, the feeling of the pose first. And I think you should do the same thing with the hand. You kinda of just like do a quick little sketch of the hand um, and use that to get a vibe. You don't want the hand to feel too stiff, so get the gesture the same way you would for a pose. How not to draw tip number three, overthinking the hand. Have you noticed that when you draw a hand and you look at it, you instantly know it doesn't look right. You don't know how to fix it, but you instantly know what is wrong. Um, and I think part of that is like somewhere in our brain, we know how to draw a hand. We know what it's supposed to look like, but we're taking all of this stuff, like the simple shapes, the foreshortening, the anatomy, the perspective, and it's just too much to think about all at once and we're confusing ourselves. So we need to trust that instinct in us and like doing the gesture, helps a lot with that to kind of like let our brain tell us what it's supposed to look like. And yeah, like sometimes when you get really stuck, you need to go back to those simple shapes. I'm not saying don't use simple shapes, but try to trust your instincts a little bit more. Like I've noticed when I'm trying to draw a hand and I can't, I do all the simple shapes and I still can't get it. So what I've started to do is just to do a quick sketch. And if it, the sketch doesn't look right, right erase it sketch it, erase it, sketch it, until like I get it to where like I'd be like, yes, that's what a hand's supposed to look like. And then I use that as my underdrawing and draw on top of that. And that has helped me a ton. And just to completely contradict myself, how not to draw tip number four is ignoring the rules. Well, at least some of them. So there are some really high level rules about the hand that I find super helpful and they deal with the size ratio and the relationships of the various parts of the hand. All right, so the first thing is that the fingers are just as long as the palm. If you draw a line, cut that line in half, that's where the knuckles would go. And then if you take one of those half lines, rotate it, that becomes the width of the palm. Add a little chunk for the thumb. Also, the hand length is almost the same length of the head. It's kind of from the lips to the hairline. And then the width 
of the hand is just a little bit more than half the size of the head. Also, the hand is about the same length as the forearm. And then finally, the thumb reaches up to the middle knuckle of the index finger. And this one really saves my butt. There's also this curve to the hand, which you only really see when you look at the hand straight on. But if you think about that curve and try to fill that curve when you're drawing your gestures, you'll find a really nice flow to the pose. And speaking of feeling, not seeing, how to not draw tip number five is drawing every single finger. So I think about drawing the hand the same way as drawing a crowd scene. So my natural instinct when I'm drawing a crowd scene is to draw every single person so that you can see every single person. Um, and that's not the way you do it. You're gonna end up with a very flat, a very like stale, sterile uh, drawing of a crowd. Like the way you wanna do it is to stack the people, have people behind other people where you can't see them. And this starts creating a real sense of depth and atmosphere to it. And you wanna treat drawing the hand the same way. If you try to draw the hand where you can see every single finger, um, it's flat obviously but when you turn it like this like you end up not seeing like you can't see my index finger and my middle finger really and so you kind of want to do that and when you're drawing a pose you're going to start twisting the hand to where you can see all the fingers and then you end up with the flat hand the hand isn't going in the right direction so really get comfortable with hiding the fingers the bonus of this is that you have to draw less of the hand so um so it's a win right there right all right, now a couple of bonus tips. The first one is drawing monster hands. Monster hands are super fun to draw because they can go into those weird shapes and nobody can say that those hands are wrong. Like it's a monster, a monster is expected to do like weird creepy stuff with their hand that doesn't make any sense. And while these are also really fun to draw, I've noticed because I'm kind of just drawing monster hands in any pose that I want to, it really helped me get comfortable with the gesture of the hand, kind of doing like a quick sketch of the monster hand and then going with whatever that sketch was. And this really translated when I started drawing like normal human hands uh, because I trusted the gesture more. I was able to like identify what my brain was trying to tell me when I drew that quick gesture. So I would say draw a whole bunch of monster hands. They're really fun. Uh, plus I think you get added benefit for drawing like real human hands. Um, and then the next tip is if all else fails, uh, just put all of your characters in gloves. I did this for my comic Shiver Bureau. Everybody in the comic is wearing gloves. I even called it out in the story of the fact that everybody was wearing gloves. So if you can't figure it out, put them in gloves. I hope those were able to give you a helping hand. Um, and if you do try them out, please leave a link to your art. I would love to check it out. And if you have any of your own hand tips or tricks, please help me and leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, be sure to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Pop, 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 p